Welcome to this month's edition of the Game Soul Canada. I'm Mark Power. It's March of 2023, and once again, we're going to be looking at a Quebecois show. Sue me if you don't like it. And this time, so it's centered around a format that hasn't really done well in game shows. And that's scrambled words. The only other two times I can think of where scrambled words were the main focus of a game show were the 1986 unsold pilot by Murph Riffin, Buzzword, and the 1993 NBC game show Caesar's Challenge, which only ran for one season. This format is actually pretty good, and it ran for four years. Pretty respectable. And although it has a silly name which can translate as chaos or fraca, depending on which dialect you want to use, I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's take a moment and look at Shari Bari. Shari Bari! Et voici votre animateur, Monsieur Guy Monglin. <laughs> <laughs> Monsieur Jocelyn, merci beaucoup. Merci à vous tous. Bienvenue à Charivari encore une fois. Charivari was a Québécois game show that ran from August 31st of 1987, with its final episode airing on August 30th of 1991. So it lasted exactly for four years. The host of the show is Montreal-based TV personality Guy Mongrain who would go on to host several game shows. And he's joined by announcer Jocelyn Cormier. The show follows a simple format around unscrambling words. Three teams play, each team made up of a contestant and a celebrity partner. The process works as follows. The contestants in the first round are responsible for trying to solve the words. A scrambled word is shown in a category, and the contestant has five seconds to try and solve it. An asterisk means that it's a proper name, while a hyphen means it's a compound word. If the contestant can solve the word in those five seconds, they score 100 points for their team. If, however, they fail the answer in those five seconds, they're given a second chance, and their partner can try to help them by offering a one-word clue. If they fail the second time, they're then given a third and final chance. Their partner is allowed to give them one more one-word clue, and correctly solving here wins 25 points. If, however, the contestant gives a wrong answer, or the celebrity provides an illegal clue, then they score zero. Round lasts until all three teams have each played three words. In the second round, three, each team plays three words again, but this time the roles reverse and the celebrities try to solve the words while the contestants are responsible for providing clues. The values are also doubled to 200, 150 respectively. For the third and final round, the process reverses again with the contestants solving the words and celebrities providing clues. Solving in the first five seconds earns 300 points. In the second five seconds, 150 points. And in, on the third chance, 75 points. This continues until a single sounds, meaning that it's the final round, with each team getting one more word. Whichever team finishes with the high score, wins the game, receives a prize, and goes on to, to the big board for a chance at the day's grand prizes. For the big board round, the contestant simply faces five more scrambled words. Each word gets progressively harder, and the prizes get better with each one. To help the contestant, they are allowed to have up to two one-word clues for use on all five words. 
So there's a little bit of strategy if they think the clue won't help them on the word they can just skip it and save it for the bigger prize. In all total, the prizes usually add up to somewhere between $1,000 and $1,500, which is not bad by Canadian game show standards. But that's not it. Any contestant who solves at least three words earns the right to play a second bonus game. For the second bonus game, the contestant simply begins choosing letters in the word Charivari. Behind three of the letters is an X. Behind three is a plane representing a trip. Behind two is a car representing a car and one which will allow them to pick again. The contestant keeps picking letters until they either find a pair or until they hit an X. If they find either the car or the trip, they win that prize. And that's pretty generous of Canadian game shows at the time to offer a $3,000 trip or an $8,000 car. And believe it or not, we're still not done. Because Sharivari was played as a pseudo-tournament. At the end of every season, the biggest money winners would be brought back and would compete in an elimination tournament. The only difference to the format here is that each game was played with four teams of a contestant and a celebrity, but the format pretty much remained the same. The winner of the entire tournament would win the grand prize. Get ready for this. A fully furnished house and an in-ground swimming pool worth $115,000. That's right, a Canadian game show was offering a fully furnished f***ing house and a pool as a grand prize. Now that is completely unheard of. I don't know where they got the money for it, but I guess they succeeded in getting it and the show did really well. So, because a four-season run is nothing to sneeze at. Especially for the late 80s when game shows were kind of on the way out. Now I can't help but think if they had scaled it down, maybe they would have had more leeway and gotten a longer run. Because the network would have been less apprehensive about spending money. And you could also argue that it's such a lighthearted game that a six-figure grand prize isn't really necessary. But hey, I'm not complaining. If they've got the money to give out, go for it. The format is a little repetitive, but it's engaging. And it's one of those few shows you can tune in at any moment and play along with. Kind of like Lingo or Wheel of Fortune. Kimo Grand does his usual great job as a host. Having great chemistry with announcer Jocelyn Cormier. And interacts well with the celebrity guests and the contestants while keeping the game moving at a pretty good pace. And if you're a nerd like me, you gotta appreciate all the 80s inspired graphics, music, and even the sound effects which sounded like they were lifted from a Nintendo game or an Atari game. So all in all, a fun show. So that was Sharivari. Despite the silly name, it's actually a pretty decent format. A little repetitive, but very engaging. And much like successful word games like Lingo and Wheel of Fortune, it's one of those shows where you can tune in any moment, and you can jump right into the game and play a lot. And that's probably what helped it have such a pretty good run. Four years is nothing to sneeze at. Especially that era in television. So, I think it should be revived. It's maybe a little overdue now, but I don't see any reason why not. Simple enough format, it could easily be imported to other countries. GSN, I hope you're listening. So that's going to do it for this edition of the Game Show Canada. Till next month, on behalf of all of us at Game Show Garbage, log me your big chip draw. <laughs>